This is a tutorial on solving rates, ratios, and proportions. The first thing we're going to discuss are ratios. A ratio is just a comparison of two quantities, and it's usually done in, with division or in fraction form. So if we had a movie theater, and it had 12 screens showing movies, and we had 600 people watching these movies, then our ratio of people to screens would be 600 people over 12 screens. If we wanted the ratio of screens to people, then we would just have 12 screens over 600 people. So that's how you make a ratio. Now because ratios are in fraction form, if that fraction reduces to the same number, we say the two ratios are in the same proportion. So if our first movie theater had the 600 people over 12 screens, well 600 divided by 12 is equal to 50. If we had a second movie theater that only had four screens and was serving 200 people, well 200 divided by 4 is also 50. So while these movie theaters are different sized and have different amounts of people, they each serve the same amount of people per screen. Or we would say their ratios, the two movie theaters, their ratios are in the same proportion of people to screens. Now proportions can be used in a lot of things and the most common example is in baking or cooking with recipes. So if I have a recipe to make four loaves of bread and I know that four loaves of bread are made with one pound of flour and I had four pounds of flour at home and I wanted to use it all to make bread how many loaves of bread would I make? Well, to make sure that the loaves come out right, I have to keep my ingredients in the same proportion. So here my ratio, four loaves of bread to one pound of flour, reduces to four. And I have four pounds of flour and I was wondering how many loaves of bread to make, and I have to keep my ratio in the same proportion so I have to make 16 loaves of bread to use up all the flour. Well, how did I know I had to make 16 loaves of bread? I knew I needed one pound of flour per four loaves, and I had four pounds of flour, but how did I solve this proportion, or how did I solve this ratio to maintain our proportion? Well, there's a simple method called cross multiplication. Now if you have two ratios, here I have four fifths and eight tenths, and these are in the same proportion. And I can show you that by using cross multiplication. Cross multiplying is just taking the numerator of the first ratio and multiplying it by the denominator of the, net, the second ratio, and then vice versa. So you would multiply across this way, and then multiply across this way. So four times 10, supposed to be equal to 8 times 5 if these ratios are in the same proportion. Well 4 times 10 is 40 and 8 times 5 is 40 so these ratios are indeed in the same proportion. So let's look at some examples. Here I have the ratio 3 over 5 and I want to maintain the same proportion with this other ratio which is 9 over some number I don't know. Well, you can use cross multiplication, so you'd get 3 times x has got to be equal to 5 times 9. Well, 5 times 9 is 45, so 3x is equal to 45, and then I just divide by 3, and I get x is equal to 15. So if I want to keep this 9 over some number in the same proportion as 3 over 5, then this denominator has to be 15. So 3 over 5 is in the same proportion as 9 over 15. Let's try the next example. Here we have the ratio of 4 over 9, and it's equal to some number over 36. Or the ratio of 4 over 9 is in the same proportion as some number over 36. So again, you can just cross multiply. 4 times 36 is equal to 9 times y. 
Well, 4 times 36 is 144. And that's equal to 9 times y. And then divide by 9. And you're going to get y is equal to 16. So we would say that 4 ninths is in the same proportion as the ratio of 16 over 36. So if I went back to my original example with the 4 loaves over 1 pound times x loaves over 4 pounds, I could cross multiply those and I would get 4 times 4 is equal to 1 pound times x. Well 1x is just x and then 4 times 4 is 16. So x is equal to 16. So that's how I knew I needed 16 loaves for 4 pounds of flour. Now the next thing we have to discuss is rates and unit rates. Rates are just ratios that represent two different quantities. So eggs per cake, miles, per hour. They're just ratios that have a different quantity or if you want to think of a different unit on the numerator and then a different unit in the denominator. So standing next to a small road Jim counts 18 cars in two hours. His rate would be 18 cars over two hours or you could say 18 cars per two hours. Now a unit rate is just like a, a normal rate, except the denominator is always 1. So if Jim has counted 18 cars per 2 hours, we would say that his unit rate is 9 cars per 1 hour, or 9 cars per hour. Other examples of unit rates again are miles per hour, feet per second, gallons per day, Pretty much anything you can come up with that has two different quantities in the numerator and denominator and that the denominator is always represented with a one. So feet per one second, mile per one hour, or gallon per one day. So now let's take a look at a problem where we've got to convert from one unit rate to another unit rate. In this problem they tell us that a snail crawls at a rate of four feet per day. Find the snail's speed in inches per hour. Well, as we know, we should begin with the unit that they gave us. In this case, they gave us four feet per day. So I'm gonna write that down below. Four feet over one day. Now, we wanna end up in the unit of inches per hour. So I know that I've gotta get out of feet and into inches, and I've gotta get out of days and into hours. I'm gonna begin by getting us out of feet. What I'm going to do is multiply by a ratio of feet to inches. So the question is, do feet go on top of this ratio or on bottom? Well, because I want feet to cancel out of this fraction, I'm going to put feet on the bottom because they're currently on top and whenever we divide something by itself, it disappears. So I know in this ratio that one foot is going to be equal to 12 inches. And now because we have feet on top of the fraction and on bottom, feet are going to cross cancel. They're going to cancel out. So now we have inches over days. So inches per day. However, what we want is inches per hour. So inches over hours. So what we need now to do is to multiply this fraction that we've got going by another ratio that converts days into hours. So again, the question is, do days go on top or on bottom of this ratio? Well, because days are currently on the bottom of the fraction, and we want to get rid of days, we need to put days on top. That means that hours is going to go on the bottom. And we want this to be an honest ratio so that we can say there are one day with 24 hours, or there are 24 hours in a day. So now day is going to cross cancel from the bottom of the fraction, and the top there, it's going to disappear. And the unit that we're going to be left with with this fraction is inches over hours. Because remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply numerators times numerators and denominators times denominators, so we multiply just directly across. So let's see what we're going to have here when we're done. We've got 4 times 12 times 1, which is 48, and the unit that we have remaining up top is inches, and on the bottom we have 1 times 1 times 24. 
and our unit is hours. So we've got 24 hours on the bottom. So notice that our rate is in inches per hour. Now we just have to simplify. We have 48 over 24, which you may notice reduces to 2 inches for every 1 hour. Or you could think of it as 2 inches per hour. So that's going to be our answer. When we say that there's a snail crawling at a rate of 4 feet per day, it's also crawling at a rate of 2 inches per hour if you want to think of it that way. So let's try this again. Tony Sky dives out of an airplane and falls at 120 miles per hour. What is his speed in feet per second? Well, we have 120 miles per one hour. Now we're going to have a lot of unit conversions in this one. If you don't know, one mile is equal to 5,200 and 80 feet. And then one hour is equal to 60 minutes and then one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So we're going to use all three of these to find his speed in feet per second. So if one mile is 5,280 feet we're going to multiply our ratio of 120 miles over 1 hour, 5,280 feet over 1 mile, and we're going to multiply it again. We have hours in the denominator, we're trying to get it to seconds, but we got to go to minutes first. So we'd say 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes. And then one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So what you're going to get is 120 times 5,280 all divided by 60 times 60. And notice our units cancel. Miles cancels with miles. Hours cancels with hours. And minutes cancels with minutes. So all we're left with is feet and seconds. Well, 120 times 5,280 is 633,600. And then 60 times 60 is 3,600. And if I divide those two numbers, I'm going to find out that Tony is falling at 176 feet per second. And that completes the tutorial on solving rates, ratios, and proportions.